Good morning, everyone. The Mary Griffith Show is underway on this Friday, the 5th of July, brought to you exclusively by Hilbing Auto Body. Remember, if it happens to you, take it to Hilbing. Today is the first Friday of the month, but we're not going to be talking about the Quincy Public Library today. Instead, we're going to break our format a bit and talk to two gentlemen, one at a time, uh, who are very involved in the life of Father Gus Tolton, the first African-American priest ever ordained uh, from America, and uh, a man who is on his way to sainthood. So joining me first up on the phone lines is Chris Foley. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Mary. Thank you for having us on. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, Father Tolton, and tomorrow there's a pilgrimage in Quincy uh, that goes from St. Peter's Church to the St. Peter's Cemetery where Father Tolton is buried. But before we get into all that, I need to know a little bit about the Chris Foley story. Introduce yourself to our audience and tell us how you got interested in the life of Father Gus Tolton. Sure. Well, I'm a filmmaker. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I did live in Los Angeles for about a decade. And uh, I'm a committed Catholic, and this story of Father Tolton came across uh, about six years ago. I just saw a short Internet article about him, and um, I was immediately fascinated because I was originally a history major, and I'm kind of a Civil War nut, and I just thought it was crazy that he escaped during the Civil War under fire, uh, escaped from slavery. And so I wanted to, I started thinking about it as a possible movie because I'm a screenwriter, and um, I was like, where am I going to get more information about that? And that same week that I had first heard about him, someone at my church said, there's someone coming to give a talk about this priest you've probably never heard of, Father Tolton. And I'm like, I just heard about him. And it was Bishop Perry, who's in charge of the canonization process for Father Tolton. So I went to hear him speak, kind of got the rest of the story, and I went right up to him afterwards. I said, I'm going to make a movie about this. Wow. And he... He didn't know me from Adam, but he's like, okay. And I stayed in touch with him, and he helped me do the research to get the story down. And um, we were off to the races. We started with a short film, um, and now we're trying to turn that into a feature film. Okay. Well, I understand you also got kind of some Tolton information and came to Quincy to have a little bit of tour from uh, our late great father, Roy Bauer. Yes, so Bishop Perry um, introduced me by email to Father Bauer and said, you know, while you're doing, I told him I was going to Quincy and to do some research. He said, well, this is the man you need to talk to. And so this was about three years ago now. Um, Father Bauer uh, met me right in Quincy, and he basically gave me the whole Father Tolton tour. Um, he took me to... Um, all the churches, which a lot of people know about, including there's a sign where the black church, St. Joseph's, used to be. He pointed out where Father Tolton's apartment was, which I think very few people know that, so I want to keep that tradition alive. And then, of course, he took me across the river to Missouri to see um, where Father Tolton was a slave, the church and the land where he was as a slave. Wow, you did get a great tour. Father Roy Bauer, unfortunately, has passed away. But one interesting fact for you, Chris Foley, you're not doing this interview in person. You're over the phone. But the man who's producing the Mary Griffith Show this morning is Steve Bull, my radio show partner. And he is the nephew of Father Roy Bauer. So if you, oh, when you get amazing. back to Quincy by marriage, yes. Well, yes, Father Roy <laughs> wants to make very sure that his family married into Steve's family, that Steve does not have the holy lineage. My wife's uncle. Yes. But we are hoping okay. maybe someday that Father Roy will be made a saint, too. But we'll leave that. We'll get Father Gus first, and then we'll worry about yes. Father Roy. He was a great, a great man, Father Roy Bauer, and really uh, pushed the cause for Father Gus Tolton to be a saint. Now, you're a filmmaker. You've got a great story here. This really is the, the true life story of Father Tolton is kind of made... It's a good Hollywood movie. It would be a great Hollywood movie, rated G, of course. But how do you go from having, you know, a small little segment to a full-length feature film? How is that all going to happen? Right. Well, it's a it's a big process um, because there's most movies. If you if you want them to go mainstream and get in the theaters, it's, it's several million dollars uh, to get it done, and so. Um, 
we knew that a lot of movies, uh, to catch Hollywood attention, catch co-producers' attention, they get off the ground sometimes by doing what's called a proof-of-concept film. So they do either a portion of the film or a trailer or something like that to kind of show this is what it's kind of going to look like. And in our case, I, I thought that Father Tolton's childhood was kind of, not only was it part of the bigger story, but it was kind of a self-contained narrative. You know, will he be able to escape slavery or not? And so we just focus on Gus as a boy in, in our short film. And now we're, um, we, 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 after we completed shooting that, we sent that out to film festivals. We were in several film festivals. And now we're kind of um, doing, sh- doing some private screenings with churches and other places as we put together the money um, for the feature film. And I have some co-producers on board. We're also doing a crowd investing fund at acrossmovie.com. And um, we're taking meetings. We've had meetings with some of the bigger studios, and we put together a whole presentation of how we see the feature playing out. And so uh, things are moving forward really well, um, and a lot of good things are happening. As, as people hear more about Father Tolton, like you said, it's, it's a story that's made to be a movie. We're talking with Chris Foley, a Nashville-based uh, filmmaker and uh, historian. And he and John Graham, who will be my guest in about 20 minutes from now, who is helping to make this film. And this, we're going to talk more about the funding of it when we talk with John Graham. Some of the questions I'll ask you, I'll probably ask Mr. Graham later on in the day. But you've already got this proof of concept film. I know that somebody here in Quincy years ago did a very short little segment about Father Gus, and it showed on EWTN, the Eternal Word Television Network, a Catholic-based channel that you can get on your cable uh, network, you know, depending on what cable network you subscribe to. Is that kind of what you're doing with this Father Gus as a boy aspect, making something small, perhaps hoping to get it shown in some manner on some kind of a cable and then trying to expand it from there? Yes, and and we're actually in talks with EWTN as well, and we'll probably have something to announce soon about that. But um, the the purpose was always to turn it into a feature film and bring it not just to Catholic audiences but to everyone and try to get it in theaters and on major streaming services. Um, And our film, as far as I know, is the first one that's a dramatic retelling. There's been several um, short-form little documentaries made, but ours is professional screen actors, guild actors, um, shot, you know, in, in, as, as a normal film would be, but on a little bit lower budget. Um, it's got a lot of drama and a lot of action, as you can imagine, because it's the escape movie. And um, so it's kind of a, a slightly different take than anyone has done before. And um, we think we, we got such wonderful performances from our actors um, that that kind of it, it, it draws people in. Our main actor who plays young Gus, a 10-year-old Gus, um, is a Georgia-based actor. And as a lot of people know, that's a very hot film city down in Atlanta right now. And he's been in a Clint Eastwood movie and an Oprah movie, and he's the little star of our film. So um, it's... It's, it's been really fun to make and just to, and to see people's reaction because outside of Quincy and Chicago, the majority of people have not heard of Father Tolton. And even Catholics are just starting to hear about him with him being named Venerable a few weeks ago. Yes, he has been uh, elevated to Venerable, which is one more step closer to sainthood. For those who are not of the Catholic faith, you have to have certain miracles attributed to your intervention to be named a saint, and there are people working on that with Father Gus Toton's intervention. But more important to me, and I always say this, I'm a Catholic as well, but I always say to Protestants in Quincy, embrace this, because if we get that shrine at St. Boniface Church at 7th and Main uh, as the Father Gus Tolton uh, shrine, St. Gus Tolton, hopefully, you're going to see people come here like they do to Lourdes and Fatima and Knock and you know, everywhere else. So it's going to be a tourism boom, uh, if nothing else. Let's talk about shooting uh, the film, because as you said, the one that I mentioned that showed on EWTN used a lot of still photography, just pictures of pictures, you know. But you actually went out and had to film, like, for example, the boat escape scene, where Martha Tolton put her children in that 
boat and try to get across that river to safety with shots being fired. Talk a little bit about how you shoot something like that. And did you shoot there in the Hannibal area? Where did you shoot that? Yes, so uh, we actually had our first day of shooting um, at, in Hannibal and nearby in Brush Creek, just across the river from Quincy there. Um, so um, it was great because um, our very first shot, which is kind of the, on the poster for our movie, was the sunrise over the Mississippi. Um, we shot that in Riverview Park in, in Hannibal. Um, and so we were actually that day overlooking the actual spot where Father Tolton and his family would have escaped because we know that he crossed the Mississippi um, right near Hannibal. And then we went down um, about 20 miles from there to a little crossroads called Brush Creek where his childhood church is still preserved as a historical landmark. We shot at that church, and we, and the caretaker of that church owns the land where Father Tolton was a slave. And so we actually shot scenes in the cornfield where Father Tolton actually would have walked. Well, that's really amazing. Um, Because you're talking to me over the radio, and I have no idea, uh, uh, is Chris Foley or John Graham uh, black? Are are you guys members of the African-American community, or you're just interested in Father Tolton? We're actually both uh, Caucasian guys who just kind of latched on to this story because of how incredible it was. One of our co-producers, Princella Smith, is African-American. Of course, a lot of our cast is African-American. And um, it's been wonderful kind of seeing people of all walks coming in onto this film and all faiths, too. Like, the majority of our crew is not Catholic, but they were still so inspired by Father Tolton's story and... They worked hard. Um, you mentioned the, the boat escape scene. Um, that was very difficult to shoot for our actors playing the Tolton family. Um, we, Although we shot the overlook of the river there in, in um, Hannibal, we couldn't shoot on the actual Mississippi because it was too dangerous, but we shot on a lake near Nashville, a couple of lakes, and our first boat started sinking, and our actors were kind of in a lot of pain and muck and wetness in the boat. Um, the park officials wouldn't let us use our Civil War rifles the first time. And um, we kind of, my, my wife, who's kind of my my spiritual muse, started a, a prayer novena, like, okay, we need to reshoot some of this. And I'm like, well, we need another boat because this other one is sinking. And, um, sh- and she said, well, how about you call that canoe place down the road? I'm like, well, canoe places don't have rowboats. She said, just call. And I did. And they're like, we don't have any rowboats. But there's one for sale across the street, and we found this perfect wooden rowboat that looked 1800, and we reshot a lot of that scene um, near Kentucky Lake, uh, west of Nashville. I'm familiar and with it. And it came yeah. out even better. It's interesting. That maybe is a miracle that you can ascribe to Father Gus. See, we've got to offer all of this up for Father Gus' yes. intervention. So the part you have in the can now is uh, Gus Tolton as a boy. Uh, growing up in yeah. Brush Creek as a slave, his mother deciding that she wanted to come get on the Underground Railroad in Quincy, Illinois. And uh, does it does it end uh, with him? He makes it to Quincy. Does it show any of his life in Quincy, or does it end just with the escape? No, we, we just show his boyhood escape. That's the story for the short film, okay. and we kind of left the rest for the feature. And um, it's super dramatic, as some of your audience might know, um, before Gus was able to escape, his father left to join um, the Union Army during the Civil War to fight for freedom. And so that's part of our story, seeing what we imagine his father must have been like. Um, and, of course, it's a perilous journey for the Toltons because uh, most sources say that uh, they were that Martha, his mom, was carrying a, a little baby at the time, his sister Anne, who, who still has descendants living in, in Chicago. Um, so... You know, imagine that, a mom and three children trying to escape amidst the Civil War, being fired upon by Confederate soldiers. We dramatize all of that in our short film. You are going to, you mentioned these screenings. You're trying to have a screening at St. Rose Church in Quincy. Do you have a scheduled date for that? Yes. um, That's another what I like to call a God wink, um, how that came about. Um, My college roommate from Christendom College, there's a man named um, Father Joseph Kortzer who became a priest, and he's with an order um, that sends the priests into different dioceses. And just uh, 
three days ago, he was appointed pastor of St. Rose there in Quincy, yeah. uh, which is pretty crazy because he's never worked in Illinois before, and he knew I was working on this Tolton movie, but it had nothing to do with him being appointed there. And he, One of his first things that, that he did as pastor was uh, set up a screening there at St. Rose in Quincy, and so we're doing that on August 11th, and he said that the response has been gangbusters so far, so... Uh, he's like, we're not going to be able to fit everybody, and he scheduled four screenings that day on August 11th. That is fantastic, and I tell you what, I don't even know if it's been in our church bulletin yet, but I'm sure everybody from all the Catholic churches in Quincy will want to get to St. Rose on August 11th, Then really everybody should. See, this story to me, it's a Catholic story, but I think it's also a black story, a story about overcoming the suppression of slavery, only to find out you're suppressed again. Here's a group that supposedly, you know, the Catholic Church, church following God, is supposed to welcome everybody. Well, well, we'll give you an education, Gus, but when it comes to becoming a priest, nobody would take him because he was black. He had to go to Rome. And so it's interesting. He escaped from slavery only to be, in, in a way, in a different kind of slavery, a slavery against opportunity, and then he came back to Quincy after he was ordained. He just was so popular that a lot of people didn't like that. And some of the uh, Catholic priests were a little bit uh, racist. They're human beings. And they kind of drove him out to Chicago. So there's a whole bunch of that story that you're going to have fun telling. And I think it's a story that stands the test of time for the struggle of mankind. But I'm, I'm especially um, interested in having more people in the African-American community know about this because I think that slavery in our country, we don't talk enough about what happened to people after they were slaves, you know, after the Civil War. Who yeah. went on to become successful and what challenge does they have? And certainly Gus Tolton is one of those. Well, uh, Chris Foley, we're going to be out of time with you here. I've got to take a commercial break, and then we've got to hear from your uh, co-conspirator here, John Graham. But is there anything that I wasn't smart enough to ask you that you would like to add about this uh, small film that you've put together about Gus Tolton as a boy? Um, not really. I mean, I, I just want people to learn about it and support the film. Um, they can look at more about it at acrossmovie.com. And, of course, um, now that he's venerable, you can pray for Father Gus's intercession. And I don't know if you've mentioned yet there's a pilgrimage there in town on Saturday for that, that Father Zenley's leading. Um, and um, just, you know, learn about Father Gus and support our movie and, and go ahead and pray to him. He may, may, be, may bring a miracle into your life. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris Foley. Uh, it's interesting how paths cross, and you are now are how interesting that Father Roy Bauer's nephew is actually the producer of this show. So, again, it's another one of those God wink things. We'll say goodbye to you. And we'll uh, talk to your buddy John Graham here in just a moment. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Mary.